Facebook officially suspended President Trump's Facebook account for the next two years. Why? Because he's a risk to public safety. The decision comes as the tech giant announced it would no longer exempt politicians from moderation rules, making it easier for the site to delete content from politicians they don't like. Remember when Mark Zuckerberg said Facebook wouldn't be an arbiter for political speech? Apparently, he doesn't remember that either. Joining me now, author of The Madness of Crowds, Douglas Murray. Douglas, thanks so much for coming on. Great to be with you. It really concerns me to see a decision like this happen. When you see the power of Facebook to shut down the ability of a, an elected uh, leader of the, in the United States uh, to communicate with his fans in, in a way like this, it really raises concerns to me about political speech going forward. What's your response to this exertion of big tech power? Yes, uh, Mark Zuckerberg sent out uh, one of his vice presidents, the vice president for global affairs, a man called Nick Clegg, uh, who today announced that we believe his, Donald Trump's, actions constitute a severe violation of our rules, which merit the highest penalty available. Uh, uh, many of your viewers uh, will be wondering who this creep and cretin is. Uh, I know uh, I've followed this creep and cretin, Nick Clegg, for many years. He used to be our deputy prime minister in the country of my birth, Great Britain. Uh, he was chucked out by the British electorate uh, because he was wildly unpopular. He was then chucked out by his own constituents so that he wasn't even in the House of Commons. But now he gets to say what a former president of the United States can say where and when. So in some ways, I congratulate him for his enormous global upgrade from <laughs> in his land of birth to deciding who can say what across the globe. It's an amazing, amazing promotion. Yes, it's quite the achievement. I mean, it's, there's an audacity to it uh, that's amazing. When I, when I look at this type of, of decision, it makes me concerned about the future, but it also makes me uh, you know, aware, I think, the degree to which we can no longer trust these type of entities, these corporations, uh, to seek out uh, the public interest when it comes to simply being able to communicate with politicians. Do you think that there's a slippery slope from here that's going to lead to increasing problems with adjudicating over over and over again, what violates what rules based on who's offended by what elected politicians say? It's, we're already on it. We're way down it. Uh, these companies that uh, assume the right to decide what you and I and all of us can know, read and say are nowhere near up for the job. My own view is that absolutely nobody could be, but they're especially not up for the job. They're especially unqualified. They talk about free speech as, as if nobody thought about it until a seminar they had sometime last semester. I mean, we're dealing with kids here, mm -hmm. and when we see them talking about our language and our rights, and our ideas and our permission to exchange ideas across America, across politics, across the world. It's very, very sinister what they're doing. Let's remember, as, as Melissa Chen was saying in your previous segment, I mean, these companies got everything about the last year wildly wrong. We just discovered a new one, which is the lab leak issue. For the last year, Facebook, Twitter, all of these panjandrums of deciding what we can know and say, uh, decided the lab leak was a total conspiracy theory. Uh, so now they've got to turn that one around. They're not fit for purpose. They don't know what they're doing. And it's high time that we, the citizenry, made it clear that we cannot and will not live under the rules of big tech. They're not up to the job that they've taken it upon their shoulders to try to perform. It's, it is really insulting to me that uh, Mark Zuckerberg now occupies a more powerful position in America than, than the Pope in Rome. <laughs> Douglas Murray, thank you so much for taking the time to join me tonight.